All right. Well, welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report, where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. The first thing I wanted to talk about today is some news that actually comes out of Brazil. I got an email from one of my subscribers, a fella named Nemsek, which I don't think I'm pronouncing correctly. In fact, I'm probably not, so my apologies in advance, but he wrote me an email. He says, hi, Nick, I am a Brazilian vapor from New York, and I'm trying to help the Brazilian community. I don't know if you are well, but in Brazil, it is not legal to vape. So it's not legal to vape in Brazil, but it is legal to buy and sell in Brazil, according to his email. He says, so we started a petition to the Congress to change that and get them to make things right. Our time is running out and I'm doing my best to help them, reaching out to every vapor that I can. He says, and since I followed you since my first day of vaping, I know you could do something to help to reach out to people. I guarantee the community would be thankful for anything that you can do to sign the petition. All that's required is to sign in with Facebook or Google. So he sent me a link to a petition and I'm gonna go ahead and put that petition down in the description below this video. Overall, as a general rule, I'm not a huge, huge fan of petitions. Petitions are the bare minimum that someone can do for advocacy. So just make sure if you're in Brazil and you're a Brazilian vapor and you're going to sign this petition, make sure that this petition isn't the only thing you do. This petition is looking for 20,000 supporters and right now they're hovering right almost at 4,000 supporters. And I'd love for them to get this over the top. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is link down in the description to this Brazilian petition. And if you are a Brazilian vapor or you live in Brazil, definitely check it out and definitely sign it as a first step towards initiating some change. The petition itself says, electronic cigarettes are already adopted in first world countries like the United States and England in the fight against smoking. Well. Not so much in the United States, but definitely England. But we're currently working on the United States, and I believe that we'll get there too. Being a proven alternative, 95% less harmful, by releasing commercialization, we will combat an evil that kills 8 million people a year in the world. The electronic cigarette suffers great resistance on the part of the lobbies and the pharmaceutical industries and smoker for being a cheaper and efficient alternative to quit smoking. Releasing the commercialization and officializing electronic cigarettes in Brazil will be a step towards equating the country with other countries of the first world and underscore the commitment to the health of the Brazilian people. And absolutely, a petition is a great jumping off point, but like I said, don't let the petition be the only thing you do. Moving on from that, real quickly, I wanted to talk about some emails that people have been getting from Amazon regarding Sony batteries. And multiple, multiple people and multiple, multiple subscribers have sent me this exact same thing. And what it is, is an email from Amazon. If you buy Sony batteries, batteries for your vape devices on Amazon. They've been sending out this email. For Sony, the safety of our customers is a priority. We have recently noticed that some people use our cylindrical lithium ion VTC cells Lion cells in a way that Sony did not intend for this use in e-cigarettes and vape pens. Sony has not tested lithium ion cells in e-cigarettes and vape pens due to their high performance. Sony Lion cells require safety precautions and mechanisms to protect their use. Sony is unaware that e-cigarettes or vape pens have such security mechanisms. The misuse of Sony lithium ion cells in e-cigarettes and vape pens can result in a most serious risk to personal property and security. The Sony lithium ion cells are sold to manufacturers manufacturers and are intended to power products such as power tools that incorporate certain safety precautions and mechanisms that meet our quality standards. Essentially, all this is is Sony covering their own ass. Sony doesn't want to be held responsible if someone buys some Sony VTC5 cells, maybe uses them in a mech mod, maybe uses them poorly or irresponsibly and causes that battery to vent or have some other sort of failure happen with the battery. In the event that something like that happens and it happens to make it to the mainstream media news, which is something we see pretty often about e-cigarette batteries exploding, which is such a rare, rare, rare occurrence. But if something like that were to happen, you can't hold Sony responsible because they sent this warning out. Now, I don't think Sony or Amazon 
Amazon is going to prevent you from purchasing Sony cells, Sony VTC5 batteries, or any VTC lithium ion battery from Sony. But like I said, if something were to happen and someone was injured or personal property was damaged due to negligence or just mishandling the batteries, Sony can kind of turn around and say, nope, well, uh, we, we tried to warn you about this and more or less wash their hands of the situation and not take on any of that responsibility due to someone negligently using their batteries in an e-cigarette. Fortunately, here in the vape community, we do have people like Battery Mooch that are teaching battery education to the masses and the majority of regulated mods that we use the VTC cells in do have some sort of protection mechanisms in them to prevent people from injuring themselves or causing some sort of battery failure in the device. This isn't the first time that battery manufacturers have sent out emails like this, but it's the most recent time. So for those that haven't been around, I figured I would touch on it. If you know what you're doing, you can certainly safely use Sony VTC cells inside of vapor products. And if you don't know what you're doing, please go check out Battery Mooch on Instagram so you can learn what you're doing. And now the big news headline that I saw just this morning, it appears that the FDA is going to do their own studies on things like nicotine, things like vapor products. The FDA and the federal government recently donated $20 million to vapor product research. And they donated that $20 million to UCSF, which is headed up by none other than the infamous anti-vaping crusader, Stanton Glantz. We've talked about Stanton Glantz a lot in the past, and like I said, he is an avid, avid, avid anti-vaping crusader. So the FDA essentially gave $20 million to the biggest anti-vaping crusader on the face of the earth to study vapor products. I don't think it's that far of a stretch to see where this is going. I definitely, definitely do believe in science, but I have very little to no faith in Stanton Glantz. His bias towards vapor products has already been a, a very, very transparent thing that everybody can clearly see. The San Francisco Chronicle reports, this research is meant to inform state and national policy around tobacco control, which has become newly complicated in recent years with the introduction of products marketed as low risk compared with traditional cigarettes. That claim, says public health experts, is not backed by science, except that it actually really truly is backed by science. And this seems all very well timed with last week's announcement from Scott Gottlieb basically threatening the vapor industry. The new grants are really built around developing a modern understanding of these products and how they compare with cigarettes, said Stanton Glantz, director of the UCSF Center for Tobacco Control Research and Education. E-cigarettes kind of arose over the last five years and really injected themselves into everything we're doing. What we need to do is watch how the market evolves and stay on top of it. I am genuinely, genuinely interested in what Stanton Glantz and his team finds out. And not just what Stanton Glantz and his team finds out, but how the media portrays what they find out during this study. Because believe it or not, a lot of the studies, even coming out of the United States, have been overwhelmingly positive. But the way that they get portrayed in the public news media always has a little bit of a negative spin on it. The truth will always be the truth, but how that truth gets presented to the general public can absolutely change the way that the public perceives vaping. And what we have to do, the long road ahead of us, is to get the public on our side. Stanton Glantz likes to say things like, e-cigarette use among high school students shot up to 11% in 2016 from just 1.5% in 2011, according to the US Centers for Disease Control and prevention. And yes, that statistic is absolutely true. The CDC reported that in 2016, around 11.3% of high school students reported using an e-cigarette within the last 30 days. What Stanton Glantz is failing to say is that's only a 1.5% increase from 2011. This is how words and numbers get distorted and change people's perception of things. And another thing that Stanton Glantz is failing to report is that between 2011 and 2017, youth cigarette smoking rates are down almost 16%. This is how words and numbers are used to distort people's perceptions of what's actually going on. We have the lowest youth smoking rates that the country has ever 
seen and an increase of 1.5% between 2011 and 2017 of high school students saying they've tried an e-cig in the last 30 days. 1.5% is what Scott Gottlieb is calling an epidemic. And of course, I'm going to link in the description to this article from the San Francisco Chronicle with our favorite person, Stanton Glantz. And I would just like to read the very last paragraph of this article because it's oh so rage inducing. Some adults use e-cigarettes to help them quit smoking traditional cigarettes. The assumption is that e-cigarettes are less harmful with lower levels of toxic substances inhaled. But researchers like Glantz aren't convinced they are safer. Stanton Glantz, how much longer can you just hold your head under the dirt? How much longer can you completely ignore all of the science that is going on? It's not just lower levels of toxic substances. It is substantially lower levels of toxic substances. And the majority of toxic substances that are found in cigarettes aren't even in vapor products. Things like tar, which is one of the worst additives in cigarettes, are non-existent in vapor products. That fact alone is a, undeniable, and B, should be enough to convince you that yes, these are safer than smoking cigarettes. It boggles my mind, but I truly, truly, and honestly wish Stanton Glantz and his research team the best of luck. I want them to spend this $20 million. I want them to do their due diligence on science. And I would love to see Stanton Glantz and his research team come to the conclusion that literally every other scientific body has already come to, including the largest and most respected group of doctors and scientists in the world. I've truly and honestly never seen a health organization like the FDA care so little about the citizen's health. And the biggest issue that they are all worried about is that youth vaping will lead to youth smoking. It's a completely, completely unfounded conclusion to come to, and I genuinely cannot believe that we have public health officials that are willing to narrow the road to vapor products and limit access to the 480,000 people in the United States that are going to die this year because of smoking related illnesses. The FDA is willing to make that sacrifice in order to protect the kids? Protect the kids from a product that not many of them are even using regularly? Protect the kids from a product that is at least 95% healthier for you than tobacco cigarettes? Does Scott Gottlieb or Stanton Glantz even have a conscience? And do we even need to bring up the fact that 30% of high school students drink alcohol regularly? Or that 14% of high school students binge drink regularly? Or that 23% of high school students admitted to riding in a car or driving a car while under the influence of alcohol? There are a lot more things out there, a lot more dangers, and a lot lot more vices that we could be protecting kids from, but for some reason, the FDA and Stanton Glantz are hell-bent on protecting kids from something that's going to save millions and millions of lives. With articles like this from the San Francisco Chronicle and with all of the misinformation that Scott Gottlieb is spouting off in all sorts of interviews, it's no wonder why there's so much distrust towards government officials in 2018 and so much distrust towards the mainstream public news media. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think vaping is going to save more lives than seatbelts. And the only people standing in the way of letting that happen is our own government. And obviously I will report back with any new news or findings from this particular study. I'm not sure how long or how broad the scope of this particular study is, but I for one am very, very, very interested in the results. So that's where I'm going to leave that for now. And before we say goodbye for the day, I want to remind everybody out there to join CASA. It's free. It's easy. You can follow the calls to actions and you can actually initiate some real change in the world. I truly do believe it's time for us to be united as a community and not let the FDA and the bullies in the government push us around anymore. We have to let them know that the science is there and that we're not just going to take their misinformation and criticisms lying down anymore. I feel like enough is enough who's with me. And as Kevin Skipper always said, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. <laughs>